Hey everyone, welcome to this video and today I want to help explain how to set up your pipeline correctly in Pipedrive. Obviously we can customize the stages here, but there are a number of other features that we have available to us like deal rotting, we've got probabilities we can play with. What does all this mean? I'm going to clarify all of that for you today. Now if you have any questions after this video, feel free to leave a comment below this uh, video. Or if you need one-on-one -on -one support with Pipedrive, use the link in the description to book a complimentary 30 minute intro call with me. We can talk about what you need help with and I can talk you through my one-on-one -on -one support and consulting options as well. So let's get into this video. So first things first, here we are in the pipeline settings of my account. Now I have two pipelines. I have a sales pipeline and sponsorships. And first, first things first, a pipeline basically represents a sales journey. It represents the process that uh, you need to take a lead or a deal through to get it from a new deal to closed and one money in the bank at the end of the day. So generally you want to have one pipeline per revenue stream or per sales journey. So because the way I sell my consulting practice with these stages, it's slightly different to the way I sell sponsorships for my podcast and my newsletter. So there are slightly different stages here. So that's the first thing to just understand is a pipeline basically represents a particular sales journey where the stages might be slightly different. Now these stages themselves, um, these, I, I like to think of them as the milestones that you need to take a deal through in order to close the sale. So a really good way to think of and define your stages is to use, uh, firstly, use a past tense. So you can actually see meeting arranged, needs defined, proposal sent. These are sort of, they are uh, framed in the past tense, um, so they sound like milestones. I will move a deal into this particular column, meeting arranged, when the meeting is set up. And after the meeting, and I've defined their needs, they get moved into needs defined. And when I've actually sent the proposal, again, it gets moved into proposal sent. So by phrasing them in the past tense, they sound more like milestones. So that's the first thing you want to think about is what are the key milestones that you need to hit as part of your sales journey? So this is a fairly typical process. We have holding. Now I'm going to come back and I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. So let's just go straight to prospect. Prospect or lead in, this is where like a new lead, someone comes in, they are just someone who you are expecting, you know, you're going to try and sell something to. My first goal is I want to get a meeting with them, uh, a phone call. So I need to book that. We need to have an appointment on the calendar to, to talk. So that's my next key milestone or stage here. After that meeting, uh, or the goal of the meeting is to define what do they need help with. And so I move them into this next stage. After that, I'm probably going to send them a proposal, give them some kind of option, you know, here's a fixed price, here's my hourly rate, whatever it is, um, for how I'm going to help that person. So they move into proposal sent. I'm then, then going to get some kind of confirmation, like, yep, yeah, Paul, let's go ahead. I then move them into waiting for payment, and then uh, and I'm going to send them an invoice and uh, payment instructions. Once they actually pay, then I'm going to mark the deal as one. Okay, and that's really important as well, is using that one button to say that you've won the deal, money in the bank. Of course, any time during this process, you could actually use the lost button as well to say the deal has closed for whatever reason. And with that, we can specify a reason, you know, maybe you lost touch with the client, maybe they're just not interested anymore, maybe they went with a competitor. So there might, they might be drop off during any one of these stages as well. Um, now, coming back to this holding column, I like to use this when I have a situation where maybe a client, um, uh, they're going to they've expressed interest in like a two-part project. So they say, let's start with part one. And we do that, I get payment, we start that. But then I've already identified, well, there's an opportunity for a second part here. Maybe it's a follow-up project or a follow-up piece of work. I then create a deal and I put it into holding. And that to me represents a future deal that's not really active right now because we're still working on project one, but I've put it into holding where I can then schedule an activity for myself to then look at that later on because there's some kind of future opportunity here. Um, you might also use this as well if uh, you have a lot of deals in here and maybe someone goes cold, you just move them into holding as a way of kind of cleaning up your pipeline so that you don't have it completely full of leads that are maybe going stale. So that's how I've seen some people use the holding column as well. Just a common mistake that people make is they often have like a won or lost column at the end. Instead of using the actual won or lost um, buttons on the deal, I'll quickly show you what I mean. So let's go to, well, let's just go to my deals page. 
and people just just think you know oh i should put them in here to say we've closed the deal um we actually yeah we just need to take advantage of that feature and just put uh, mark it as one or lost so using these two buttons up the top this is what i've been referring to marking it as one to say the deal's done or marking it as lost and if you do that you can specify a reason why the deal didn't close so definitely take advantage of those buttons do not create one or lost stages use the buttons as they are designed now after the sale sometimes people want to have a way of kind of servicing clients or keeping touch with old clients using Pipedrive. There's a few ways that you can do that. Firstly, let's say, let's search for me, just a contact in the system. One option is you can actually schedule an activity directly on the person's contact page. You don't, you don't always have to have activities scheduled on a specific deal. So that's one way that you can just set yourself reminders to follow up with previous clients is to schedule an activity on, you know, we can see we're on the contact page right here. We can just schedule an activity to, um, to touch base uh, in a month or two, you know, following on the project. Alternatively, I have seen some people create like a, um, a follow-up pipeline. Um, so, let me just close this. So like we've got the sales pipeline, you could actually have a third pipeline here, which is like client follow up or client servicing. And you could actually have like, you know, um, touch base after one month or six months. And you actually could have a deal that represents the follow up or the servicing of that client. Now, if you're going to use this approach, one important thing I would say is do not use the initial deal that you created the first deal that you set up that represents the, the initial sale you need to leave that in the main sales pipeline and mark it as one otherwise if you move it into your servicing pipeline now the revenue for that sale is not going to show in your reports for that particular pipeline so if you're going to use a servicing pipeline mark the deal as one duplicate the deal and you can move it into the servicing pipeline to represent how you're going to follow up and look after the client uh, really important from a reporting standpoint now, moving on, what is this probability thing? So you can see on some of these things, we've got probability set up. When you define a stage like prospect, I can, when I name the stage, I can put a probability uh, from zero to 100 in here. This is basically your estimate of a deal at this stage, what is the probability of winning it? At this point in time, what is the chance of it being won? Now for me, this is my, the, my statistics from last year tell me that all of the deals that I created, about 40% of them were won. So I've actually used that as the starting, um, the starting metric here. If they're just a prospect, there's probably a 40% chance they'll be, they'll be won. So I'm actually using my previous data to, to, to set up this um, particular probability. Now, as they move closer to the sale, well, firstly, when we get a meeting booked, I'm no more or less confident that it's going to win. So it's the same. But once I've defined their needs, hopefully I understand them a bit better. There's probably a better chance of closing the deal. Um, and there may even be drop off before then, you know, maybe they miss the meeting. After I've sent a proposal, maybe slightly better. And then finally, once they get to waiting, waiting for payment, really by that stage with me anyway, it's a pretty sure thing by me moving them in there. It's a pretty sure thing that this deal is going ahead. There should really not be any drop off from this point. So I'm like a 95% confident at that stage. So again, these probabilities represent what is the chance of winning the deal from this particular stage. And they generally increase as you move through the pipeline stages. The final interesting feature with the pipeline you can set up is this one here. So if you come to features, you can turn on deal rotting. Now, when you do that, you can, let's do it now, actually. So let's turn on rotting. When I then set up my stages, you can see now I have this display rotting after, and then I can choose a number of days. The way this works, if I had this as seven days, is a, a deal that is in this stage for more than seven days starts to rot. So this is Pipedrive basically telling you, you've got seven days to move it on. If it stays here too long, the, the deal is rotting. It's basically going cold. Um, you're missing an opportunity. So I've got seven days to move it on. Now needs defined, maybe I'm gonna allow people to sit there for a bit longer um, than a prospect where you know a new prospect comes in, I need to jump on it straight away. So my rotting time might be quicker or shorter than someone in needs to find where I wanna give them a bit more time to think about it, that kind of thing. Same with proposal. Waiting for payment, I might want to set that as two days. Like if they're not making payment within two days, I really wanna chase them up, make sure that we get this done, get, get this signed on the dotted line to get this deal closed. So rotting is a really great way of 
helping you to see what are the deals that are going cold. And the way this works as well is you'll actually see the deals starting to rot on this main pipeline page. They'll actually start to go red. So we can actually see this one's been in this stage too long. It's starting to rot. So that's the kind of final key feature um, that we've got within our pipeline, how we can customize things. And there we have it. So like I said, if you have any questions about anything to do with setting up your pipelines or anything I've mentioned today, feel free to leave me a comment. And if you want that one-on-one -on -one support, I look forward to hopefully talking with you soon. Thanks for watching this video.